Hey everyone, welcome back to the Spec Guide. I'm Max, being filmed by my girlfriend Gosha today. We're on the way back from an epic road trip we just did to basically uh, Western, or sorry, Eastern California. My sense of direction's all messed up, but epic road trip, 3,000 miles there and back from Colorado. And I've learned a lot about electric car range, understanding range anxiety, efficiency, all these things. So in this video, I wanna discuss how to basically dispel your range anxiety but also to confirm, range anxiety does exist. A lot of EV drivers will tell you, oh, range anxiety doesn't matter. No, range does matter when you road trip. It matters a lot, especially for a non-Tesla car. But I'm gonna talk all about that, ways I've kind of been around it, gotten to know the range of my car, gotten comfortable with it, so that I feel confident knowing when I'm gonna stop, um, how far my car can go, etc. So let's get into some details. Range is really important in electric cars for obvious reasons. If you are an electric car owner or you're thinking of one, it's probably the first thing that's on your mind or the people have asked you, right? How far does it go in a charge? And the answer, honestly, for every electric car is it actually depends a lot on many things, uh, mainly to the speed you're going. So different electric cars, of course, get different ranges based on the size of their battery. A Nissan Leaf will travel a lot less far than a Tesla Model S. It's not because the Nissan Leaf is an inefficient car, it's actually very efficient, it's just because it has a small battery. Other cars uh, get by by being very efficient, so like the Hyundai Ioniq 5 has a 77 kilowatt hour battery. The grand scheme of things for context, it's actually not a huge battery for a higher end, uh, you know, heavier crossover electric car. And yet, it gets decent range because the platform Hyundai uses is pretty efficient, especially if you get smaller wheels. So bigger, biggest things to know just off the bat, if you're looking for a car with range, Things that affect range the most are just the speed you're actually traveling in any car and the size of your wheels. So if you're watching this video and you haven't bought a car yet, but you're looking at a car like Mustang mach -E or the car I'm in, Polestar 2, um, or any other car like that, you're going to have the option of different wheel sizes. Like for my Polestar 2, with the performance pack, I get 21-inch wheels. With the non-performance pack, sorry, 20-inch wheels. With the non-performance pack, I get 19-inch. and the bigger rims look cooler typically, but they have the downside of worse aerodynamics or just um, also being heavier, but mainly aerodynamics affecting range. Wheels actually affect range a lot. I believe in like a lot of the, you know, Ionic 5 and uh, EV6 options, also the Lucid Air, right? Like lots of electric cars, they give you options for wheel sizes. The range difference can be like 40 or 50 miles. Now. How we measure range is very important for understanding range anxiety. Gas cars, electric cars, etc., will give you an estimation of range. My Polestar 2 gives me a range, you can see actually on the screen here, of 170 miles right now at 80%. Now, this is fairly new, but the Polestar got an update, so did Volvo's, like the Volvo XC40 Recharge, um, the electric Volvo. Uh, they got this update that actually changed their range prediction. So, some electric cars display range as basically what I don't like, taking the EPA range figure, which for this car is 250 miles, and multiplying it by the percent of your charge. I don't like this because when we say miles of range remaining, that's always a best guess. It's an average, it's an estimate. It varies so much. Like I said, the wheels you have in your car will affect uh, your rate of how fast you go through that range, and then your speed. If you're traveling in any electric car, 40 miles an hour, you're gonna be a heck of a lot more efficient than if you're going at like 70 miles an hour. And this even applies to like five or 10 mile an hour increments. If you are in a situation where you're trying to get to a charger and you're like low on percentage, just go in the right lane, knock the speed down a bit to a safe amount. I mean, if you have to really limp, you could put your hazards on and go in the shoulder, but go a little slower, go in the right lane, You'll be surprised, I think, for most of cases, how much range that saves you. Also, a lot of you like to carry loads, bikes, things on your car. You can see up here, we've got two bikes with us on this trip. It's been fun carrying them, but uh, that has a huge impact on our range because it's aerodynamics. Aerodynamics are so huge, right? That's why speed is a big changer because it's all about basically the, um, it's the square of the speed you're going with how much frontal area, your coefficient of drag, blah, blah, all that. You can't change much about the coefficient of drag, that's your car, the model you choose, some like the Lucid Air are very efficient, but you can't change your frontal area or the things you expose to the wind. So when you have bikes up on the roof, well, they're just gonna be less efficient. If you can, put loads inside. We've packed the car up full, so this is our best option, and I think it looks cool, but it definitely sacrifices a lot of range. Uh, but 
if you have an option, for instance, of getting a more expensive cargo rack that is advertised as being aerodynamic, like I can't make manufacturer claims, but I will say like Thule uh, has some really cool aerodynamic cargo boxes that actually do, I think, have less of a range impact. Anything you add to your car on its roof or hitch mount and whatever is going to add range. But if you can get higher end items that are more aerodynamic and designed for EVs, they'll say some of that sometimes. All that means is that they just make it more efficient. It's also going to make a gas car more efficient. But we care so much about range and we get range anxiety on electric cars because of absolute energy. Electric cars, as they come, are really darn efficient. But the absolute energy capacity of an electric car is so minuscule because of current chemistry limitations, battery density, etc. So context, my Polestar 2 has basically the equivalent of 2.2 gallons of gasoline. And it gets 200 miles of highway range when I don't have bikes on the roof with 2.2 miles, sorry, gallons of gasoline. That's crazy. Um, it's really efficient, but it shows you, you don't have a lot of energy to work with. So any changes you can make, no matter how small they might seem, can add up to a lot. So this gets into my next big important tip. Understand your car software. Like with my Polestar 2 with this update, it gives the projected range. It's not that EPA range. And that's why I really like this update. I can actually see 180 miles of range as a realistic range based on my current consumption. I actually have to go in the settings of the range assistant app here. I open that up, you go in the settings and change that to projected. That's just my Polestar, but your car may have the option to defer between these, or depending on your model, it may have one of these. Most cars default to projected nowadays because I think that's way better, right? That's when it's modeled after driving, it's dynamic, as opposed to just basically taking the EPA rating standard. I never like to use that. So it's helpful to know that. That said, your consumption can change over time. So it's good to know ways to measure consumption. We actually made a video on this channel at a spec guide where we talk about a few units of measuring efficiency. Like, for instance, uh, watt hours a mile, uh, kilowatt hours per 100 miles, or the one we like to use out of spec, miles a kilowatt hour. If that's all great to you, please watch that video. We explain all those units, how you can understand efficiency. But if you understand those units, it's kind of like MPG, right? Miles per gallon in the gas car. It arms you with the knowledge to, when you're shopping for EVs, compare which ones are more efficient, and to understand what you drive, what's more efficient. If your car has a real-time display like mine does, it's really cool to be able to see like, oh, right now I'm at about 20 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 miles of consumption. I ramp it up, whoa, that just went way up. <laughs> you, uh, hopefully uh, the camera didn't shake too much, but you saw that number. Now I'm regeneratively braking, charging my car's battery, goes into negatives. It's cool to see that instantaneous consumption. As a nerd, when I watch that and when I drive, it helps me kind of drive more efficiently, get in the habit of that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of range anxiety is basically, I just understand the efficiency, the realistic range of my car based off the load, things I'm carrying, mainly how it affects the aerodynamics. And I know to stop on a charger when I can reliably trust my range. Howdy folks. So my tip for uh, fighting range anxiety is to plan ahead and car <laughs> call your um, a local RV campsite to see if they'll actually let you camp there or not. That will really help you avoid some, some range anxiety, uh, planning ahead and using a variety of apps that I believe Max and, and friends have talked about. It. Plug, share, all oh. these things. I don't want this video to all be about charging, but that's why we're throwing it in here. It goes just that, oh, plan your stops. And I thought that's such good advice. I need to throw that in there. So yeah. use apps, plug, share, all these things. Uh, we mentioned these in other videos on this channel, so I should subscribe to Out of Spec Guide. But the more you have your trip planned, whether it's through your car's built or route planning, or a better route planner or service like that, Chargeway, whatever it is, please, the more you have a plan when you have a specific itinerary or road trip, the more less anxious you'll be, especially yes. if you have bad news. Yes, and then read the reviews. I guess people leave, write reviews, get a good night's sleep, and drink plenty of water. That will also help your anxiety while driving. <laughs> Okay, bye. I stop at a charger of 10% and it's realistic. I'm comfortable with that. If that starts dropping during my trip, like, uh, you know, when Gosha and I have been driving, sometimes that'll go to 9, 8, 7%. It's like, whoa, whoa, we got to slow down, get in the right lane, maybe draft someone if we have to, do whatever you need. Uh, we can make it work. And then you can find other chargers on your way. We'll have videos on this channel about route, route planning, finding chargers on your way. That's a whole separate topic. But when it comes to I think just dispelling range anxiety, you gotta understand it's gonna be there for most electric cars, maybe cars like the Lucid Air if you fully charge them. Um, 
where you can have 400 miles of range, not as big of an issue, but I think most affordable electric cars that people drive, right, we're getting like 150, 250, sometimes optimistically 300 miles of range. Of course, this all goes down with, like I mentioned, speed, weather, if it's winter and you're running your heater, you know, and, and you have to heat the battery, that can take a lot of energy. So all these things can affect consumption, but I hope this video gave you some important concepts to understand range anxiety and why you can, um, turn you know your car's range figure into something you can actually more un understand by just looking at the energy you're consuming how efficient your car is all of these details uh like for here like as i can see my speed is a low effect of my consumption my driving style is low that means i'm driving efficiently right now great climate control is low if we cranked up the heat i'm sure it would have a higher effect of consumption Another thing you can do if you are worried about range is set your car into an eco climate mode if it has one uh, those are great because they do give you uh, basically, you know, less heat or less cooling, but but you'll be surprised climate control can sometimes impact range substantially. Now, one thing before I end this video that I want to dispel is this notion people have that like, oh, charging my phone or things like that is going to kill my range. It won't. Uh, it really won't at all. Because uh, if you think about the size of a phone battery or even a laptop battery relative to even a smaller electric car like a Chevy Bolt or a Nissan Leaf, like you have thousands and thousands of phone batteries uh, worth of, uh, energy, of of battery cells in your electric car. So charge your phone. Don't worry about like accessories like that. Climate can have a little bit of an effect, but charging your phone and stuff like that's marginal. So don't stress about that. Keep your phone charged because hey, you might need it to find charging stations. So hope this has all been helpful. Please let me know if you have strategies for kind of easing your range anxiety in your specific model of car in the comments. And uh, hopefully this has been helpful. And I will, uh, in the info card in the description, check out, link those other videos I mentioned, like understanding units of efficiency for an electric car. Hope that's helpful. I've been Max, and I'll see you next time.